Hey, smart people. You are about to get my very best straight A strategy note taking technique. This is one idea that will help you to become an absolute learning machine. On top of that, I've got a bunch of bonus information for you too. Now, I put the time codes in the description below the video so you can jump directly to any of the topics that you want to review. You're going to join me in the studio for a live interview at one of the Tampa Bay area's most popular afternoon drive time radio shows. The Consumer Quarterback Show is also simulcast on YouTube. Now in this interview, you're going to get the three distinct parts of the learning process. Additional information about successful online learning for those taking remote classes. Of course, I'll cover a detailed explanation of what I think is the absolute best note-taking strategy that will help you to become a super learner. I'll tell you the one biggest key to learning anything fast. You'll hear why speed reading is not a good technique to use with textbooks. I'll be making a surprise announcement about my involvement with the next big advancement to the internet. What's coming after search engines like Google, Yahoo, and DuckDuckGo? This is cool. You'll also hear a bit about the history and get a behind the scenes explanation of how my YouTube channel was born. And you're going to learn what is undoubtedly the single biggest killer of grades. Why does your brain sometimes freeze up during a test? I'll tell you the key to excellent memory retention and how to get information that's stuck in your head to pop into your mind when you need it. This can really help you during a test too. Yes, this information is jam packed. Now, if you just want the note taking stuff, I've made it easy to find and review in the notes below the video. But I hope you stay tuned for all the extra bonus content I've got for you here. Now, join me as we go to the studio. What about educating your children? You certainly need a trusted advisor when it comes to that. And we brought Matt DeMeo in today. He's a memory expert. Matt, how are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. Better now that I'm with you. <laughs> Thank you so much <laughs> for coming in and helping us with all these tips. I notice you've got a lot of things going on. You've got a YouTube channel. You've got StartRemembering.com. Uh, you're an author. Tell us about all the things that you've got going on there, Matt. Well, a lot of people know me as a YouTuber these days, which makes my daughter laugh. You know, she's 20 years old <laughs> right. and her old, old yeah, man is a, is, a, is a YouTuber. But I've been publishing educational resources now for a couple of years. I've built a worldwide fan base of people that I'm able to, at this late stage of my life, be able to make an impact on mm -hmm. the lives of students all over the world. I turned 69 on my last birthday. And so I've reinvented myself yet once again by, by doing some of this stuff. And mm -hmm. on today's show, I have got a couple of really cool tips because right now, parents and children and students are getting ready for the, and thinking right. about the back to school thing That's already. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've got a technique that will help somebody become a super learner really fast. We all could use that, certainly. Matt DeMeo, memory expert. Again, he's got a YouTube channel, Be Smarter Faster. He's got some tips and some things that you might not consider uh, like a study thing, but just the little games and kind of things that get your memory working and kind of things that spark the ability to hold on to those thoughts in your head. It's funny how, as we get older, it just seems like that short-term memory. It starts to go. You know, when you talk about getting older, I'm a living proof of that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, absolutely. And you know, being able to recall and retain information is really only part of the process. Mm. So the first part, if you're going to learn anything, is you've got to be able to input it properly. Explain. Then the second part is you've got to store it effectively. I see. The last part of the process of learning is where you retain and recall the information where you're retrieving it. Mm -hmm. So if you learn how to collect it properly at the beginning and then know how to put it away. And so one of the things that I teach is kind of like a mental filing system. Okay. If you know where you put things, you can find them when you need them. Makes sense. Go figure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. Now, Matt, you, you 
course, we're doing this for quite a while, but the COVID-19 thing, all of a sudden the homeschooling, every, all the kids were home, all the parents had to become teachers and educators. I imagine everyone was like, hey, give me some help, Matt. What can, what do I, what can I do? I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because I actually wrote a book called Straight A Strategies for Successful Online Learning. Okay. There's students were faced with some problems with the isolation right. and the lack of interpersonal connection. Plus, no longer did they have a rigid schedule. So both students and parents were thrown into this new world. Mm. So what I did is I wrote a book full of practical techniques. It's short. It's only 51 pages long. Okay. It's on Amazon. That's right. And it's designed to be able to give people a set format to follow to be successful not just as a student, but a lot of people work from home now, too. Right. So this has been really helpful for those people who work from home. But one of the things that it does is it really teaches the student how the difference between dealing with a live lecture compared to a recorded lecture, compared to assignments that are there, that they're given, mm -hmm. and a new way of being able to process that information. And in just a moment, I am going to talk about how to use a trick to be okay. able to learn things really, really fast using index cards. Now, of course, I'm no you know spring chicken. I'm 50 years old, and I remember index cards from the flashcard days when I was a student, and uh, they always seemed to value. And of course, that was a proven study technique for years and years. You know, it's funny that you should say that because you're one of the rare ones that actually knows about this idea. And sometimes everything old is new again. <laughs> these days, a lot of students are into all of these apps right. to be able to take notes. And let's talk about the process of taking notes for a second. Sure. Usually when a student reads a textbook, they'll take a yellow highlighter or they'll underline, and that does nothing to put the information into your head. The I inputting could, cycle that you mentioned earlier. I, absolutely. They're not, they're not doing anything to put the information into their head. So what I teach is as you're going through a particular chapter that you take handwritten notes. Now it's interesting, when you take handwritten notes, there's a process that happens. First of all, it's what's called multi-sensory perception. You're using multiple senses to get the information into your head. The more senses you use, the better the information will stay in your head. You're forming deeper synaptic connections. I see. So watch what happens when you write something down. You're looking at the information, so the information is going in through your eye right. as you're reading it. Correct. Then you've got to process it, and now you've got to figure out what you want to write, and the information is now coming out through your hand. So check this out. It's going in through your eye, out through your hand, then back in through your eye again. Mm -hmm. So it's cyclical. So the information has now got a flow to it. I see. So here is a secret to being able to use three by five cards or four by six or whatever size. Right. I like the bigger ones personally. Right. But the trick is that instead of taking notes on big eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper where you're constantly flipping pages, make yourself a set of flashcards, just like you mentioned. Right. And I really want to compliment you because almost nobody comes up with that well, if I recall flashcards, it was mostly mathematics. I didn't, they weren't applied to the reading comprehension side like you're doing because, again, the writing of the material, once you ingest it, like you mentioned, I think that sparks the, the learning, uh, the, the writing of it again, like you mentioned, the cycle of it. Whereas the math flashcard, you know, they flip your card and you, you do the, you say, okay, that's 10 or 12 or whatever it is, and, and it's gone. It's not quite the same concept as reading comprehension and writing. And that leads me to what we're talking about here. Because let's say you're studying biology or any of the sciences, right. or you've got a reading assignment in uh, your English lit class. Mm -hmm. Well, what you do is you're going to, to make questions for yourself. So who's the main character? Or how many bones are in the human body? So on the front part of the card, you're going to create questions. So it's like you're creating your own yeah. quiz. Yeah. And on the back of the card, you'll have the answer. Now, the cool part about using cards is you can now review these cards during wasted time. Mm -hmm. So, for students that have to wait for the bus, if you're waiting for the Uber or Lyft to pick you That's up, right. while you're hanging out having a cup of coffee in the coffee shop, 
while you're standing in line to get a sandwich. There is nothing to stop you from just whipping out the cards, flipping through them, and quizzing yourself. Mm. Now, the key to being able to learn things fast is not putting information in. The key is getting information out. The more you can get information to come out of you, the better you're going to learn it. Hmm. So the more often and the more ways you can get it out, the better you're going to learn it. How about that? Isn't that so, cool? So much the same as uh, teaching a subject makes you an expert because you've got to get your ideas out of your head and explain them to somebody else. That idea of writing, again, the same time, think the information has to flow from you. I like that. So look at the different ways you're getting the information out of you. So first, when you're reading the information from the book, that's very passive. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out what question you're going to create and then actually writing it down, that's forcing the information to be processed and then coming back out. Right. Then, when you've got the card written and as you're quizzing yourself, the information is coming back out of you again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Let me tell you, people become almost superhuman when they begin to do this. And it's so easy, yeah. especially when you compare it to a lot of the apps that are out there, sure. that you've got to learn how to use it and you can only use it on certain devices. And the truth is, when something is in an electronic device, it's hidden from view. It's might as well not even be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, one of the things that you mentioned that occurs to me when you're doing the flashcards, you're not only uh, taking the material in, you're reading it. When you write it, you're, you're forced to, to read correctly. In other words, I can skim through something and think I've read it, and, and in a page or two away from there, it's gone. Because I haven't forced myself to reread it or pull something out of it. Once you decide what's the question coming from this page, now I've got to really focus and go back. Because I, I read it fast. You know, Some people can speed read. They focus on the middle of the page, and they have a way of absorbing information. Rapidly, you watch a guy turn the page, you're like, wow, he's taking that in so fast. But if, can't, if you can't produce the question from it, then it's just gone right in and right past. Speed reading is not a good way to deal with textbooks. Mm. Speed reading is great for novels and papers. And speed reading is more like when you're reading a book, the book becomes more like a movie in mm. your head. Right. Not a, an effective technique for a textbook where every little detail, you're looking at formulas, you're looking at uh, the, the names or definitions of particular things. Mm-hmm. It's a whole different process that you've got to go through. You know, Matt, it occurs to me that you might be helpful for those creating textbooks. Have you ever had been approached by a publisher that said, hey, we're, we're thinking about making a book on this or that subject. What's the best way to make sure this information is taken from our pages? I haven't, but I am in negotiations right now with a brand new learning platform online where we all know what a search engine is. Right. I am working with the developers of something called a comprehension engine. Hmm. It has now been patented, and I can finally begin to talk about it. It doesn't even have a name to it yet. Okay. I mean, this is brand new. So as much as things like Yahoo and Google change the world of search online, I'm now participating in something that is going to help people be able to comprehend and understand the things that they're searching for online. Well, I'm excited about this. I'm going to ask him more about it when we come back from this break. More with Matt DeMeo, the memory expert here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. Hey, I'm Ken Shamrock, and, and you're here with Consumer and Quarterback Show. Of course, they can go be smarter show. faster <laughs> if Indeed. they want the YouTube channel. Of course, I encourage all you folks to check out our YouTube channel. Uh, search the Consumer Quarterback Show, Brandon Rhymes, on YouTube. But Matt, he is killing it on YouTube. Tell us about your YouTube channel, Matt. <laughs> well, you know, it, it almost happened by accident. I had a video that I posted um, about two and a half years ago. It started to gain some traction called How to Absorb Textbooks Like a Sponge. Hmm. That video now has six and a half million views from people all over the world. Holy cow. So that I built a channel around it because I realized with the types of comments that people were sending me, this was before I even had an official channel, hmm. one of my friends recommended that I build a channel around it. Didn't really know much about right. it, completely self-taught, but I figured if I'm teaching people to be smarter, you know, I need to <laughs> practice what That's I preach. That's right. That's right. And so I started wherever I could and one step at a time. So I have videos on how to read faster, how to take different types of exams. You know, when you take a test, you're being tested on two things. Number one, of course, is how well you know the material. Right. But the second thing is how well you take exams. Certainly. So I teach strategies 
that will allow you to get a better grade, even if you don't know the material any better. There's some folks that don't realize they have a certain anxiety about testing or they, they get into a place where they don't have the reading comprehension for some reason because of the nervousness. Absolutely. In fact, in, uh, I have a, a short series, and this will be part of my next video training course Okay, that is all on test-taking tactics. Ah. The biggest killer of grades is stress. Right. It's not that you don't know the material. It's that you can't get the material to come to you when you need it. Mm. And so, I, again, I talk about how to get a higher score without knowing more. Hmm. In fact, today, I just published a brand new video. This one's a little bit more motivational than I usually do. Okay. It's on the secret to becoming a successful student. But it also applies to your relationships. It applies to your business. And uh, most of my material is not very philosophical. Today's new video is. Mm. Most of my videos are very practical. Step one, do this. Step two, do that. And as a result, when people follow the simple steps, like dancing, right. they're able to get the success very quickly. Now, you can imagine that a lot of folks struggle with reading. Reading comprehension is something that's you know always an issue for students. It's one of the ways that they calculate your ability to achieve in school. You know what I mean? They, they give you these standardized tests that include a, a paragraph or a story, and they're going to ask you multiple questions about it. Well, understand that you may have read that material and understand everything they said. If you can't recall it, like Matt's talking about, that step of bringing it out, you're going to fail the test. It, it may not be a true reflection of your knowledge of the material. You're absolutely right. And that's why the, the way to be able to recall it is to know where you put it. So the part about memory that a lot of people don't really understand and a lot of these so-called memory experts that are out there and I, I, I and I allow you to to use that as a title <laughs> for me because I don't know what to call myself right right, right. I, I, there's no real title for what I do I it's teach people teaching. how to learn things it's fast. teaching right he's a teacher memory is like the last part of the process but the, the the real key is having a mental filing system where you know where you put the information in an orderly fashion and that is a radical idea for most people to think in, in terms of applying that to their mind. I think that is a really cool concept. And to me, it kind of fits with the feeling of deja vu. When I have that feeling that I've heard this or seen this or I'm in this place, it's because I feel like it's in my head somewhere. And I, I, I didn't know exactly. I, I misplaced it. And now it's, I'm, I think I have this, but now it feels like I've already learned this. You want to hear something, you, know, you ever have a situation where you're in the middle of a conversation and somebody asks you a question about a 1950s TV show, black and white TV show, and you can remember the, 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 the actor right. and you can see him and the name won't come to you. And then hours later, you're brushing your teeth at <sighs> night and the name pops into your head all and you go, all the time, Desi Arnaz. Right. All the time that happens. Let me show you how to cure that. It's really simple. It, you simply say the words out loud to yourself, it will come to me in a moment. <laughs> I love but, it. Now, you know what most people say? They say, I can't remember. Right. Brilliant. So what you're doing is you're telling that little personal search engine up in your brain, I know that you think you're supposed to find it, but now you confuse your personal assistant mm -hmm. by saying the words, It'll come to me in a moment. Then you take a deep breath and then let it go. And in a moment, it'll pop into your head. It's amazing that it's in there. You just got to find a way to get it out. If you just allow your little personal search engine <laughs> to go do the job, That's they right. will find it for you. All right, Matt, we're closing the show. I want you to get last chance to tell us everything they need to know. Where's the best place to go? <laughs> well, listen. If, if anything that I've said resonates with you and you want more information, I have got a cool free video report that teaches you how to remember things without mnemonics and association and fancy memory tricks. It'll help you triple your memory power wow. because I teach you what's causing you to forget stuff. Hmm. And you can simply go to startremembering.com. Now, how are you going to remember that? <laughs> Startremembering.com. Will Thanks you start so much. remembering already? Thanks so much, Matt DeMeo, for coming in and sharing all that with us. A great show today. I want to thank Brandon for giving me the opportunity to sit in. This is the Consumer Quarterback Show.